Fireballs, healing spells, laser beams. I'm talking abilities, baby. And I'm going to show you how I made these three very different grid-based spells with only two scriptable objects. But first, hi. My name is Alan, and I'm making a tactics game from scratch. So buckle up, because we've got a lot to cover, and I've been eating a lot of chocolate, so we're going to be moving quick. If you're trying to make abilities for a game like mine, you need to ask yourself three questions. What, where, who? What does the ability do? Where does it do it? And who does it do it to? So there are three parts to an ability. The shape, the effect, and then they combine into a single object that contains a bit more specific information. Who they target, the mana cost, the cooldown, stuff like that. So let's start with the shape system. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you like the intro. I've been trying to put more effort into the intros lately, so give me some feedback. Let me know if this kind of fast intro is good. I could use some feedback. So, shapes. So I'm going to run through how the shape system works with you. And by shape, in case someone doesn't know what I'm talking about, I mean when I say click on the fireball spell, this circle that appears around the shape is. This 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 red circle is, is the, the shape of that ability. Just like if I click on laser, this is the shape of that ability. And when I click on heal, this single square is the shape of that ability. And all that goes through one system. So how does that work? Well, I think the best way to go through how shapes work is forced by trying to explain how the tiles work, how we round up to the tiles, and then we can break down the shapes after that, because once you understand how a tile works, everything else will be much more simple to understand. understand. So, so there's two parts to every tile on the map. There is the image, which is a part of a tile map that gets generated in code, and then each tile on that map gets a game object attached to it and positioned above it. So in within our tile map generator, which is just a file that I've a game object I've created, we have a ton of these tiles and each of these tiles contains an empty image, which is gets drawn on. So if I do this, you get to see that. Oh, sorry, hang on. My automatic switch was after breaking on you. But when I change the image color, it appears. So by default, this is invisible. And then anytime I want to display something on a tile, all, we, all I do is change that color. And then it contains a bunch of other information. So in this um, game script here, uh, you know, it has the position on the tile map. So when I want to reference which tile on the tile map I'm, I'm looking at. This is how I do that. This is how it, they're paired together. And then some other things are not really that important. The type of the tile, so if it's a lava or there's a grass tile, and if there's a character on it or not. And really that's all you need to worry about. All you need to know is how do I follow a tile? For example, when I want to render the tiles that for the movement event that where can we can move to, using our event range controller, I get a list of vector tree ints, which is what's correspond to the location on the tile map. And then from there, we can loop through, we can get the grid tile data, we can set that it's in move range, and then we can change the color of its sprite. And then that will display these white squares. So now that I've kind of crudely explained how we draw the tiles, draw on the tiles, so we say, we can break down how the shape system works. So basically all a shape system really is, is a text part. So I have these text files that have numbers in them, just basic numbers. Here's two examples. So the infinite ability is actually what's used for laser. Circle shape is what's used for the fireball that I showed. And then both of them go through this shape parcel file, which takes the text and puts it into a multi-dimensional array. And then we can use that multi register to go through our tile map and kind of find the tiles we want to interact with. And then we just draw those tiles to the color we want them to go to. And then boom, we have the tiles we want to work with and play with. And we know the tiles themselves know if there's a character standing on it. So we take the text file, get the tiles that we want based on the, the mouse position. And then from those tiles, we find the characters that are standing on within the area that we've that we've gathered. And then we apply whatever effect we want to them to those characters. So here we have two examples of what my spike parser does. So we have two different shapes. We've got a one and a surrounded by twos, and we've got one and three trees. So how I break it down is the rules are, if I have a one, that's kind of the origin. So that's the mouse position is one. And then two, two, two is just, these are affected tiles that we want. So in this scenario here, when we cast this ability, I end up with a shape like this getting affected. So this is one, and these are the twos surrounding it. Now for the rule for trees is a little bit different. Tree is a line. So when I say tree, I actually want everything within that direction. So if I cast, let's say my one right here, what happens is, is that I actually end up with, instead of saying just these two tiles, I end up with all of the tiles in front. So for this shape, I actually end up with something like this for a tile. And it's really as simple as that. 
just it's just about passing out some text and kind of deciding what rules I want to set. It doesn't have to be one, it doesn't have to be two, it doesn't have to be three, it doesn't have to be divided by spaces like I have it. But uh, it's just that's just the concept that I went with. And it seems to work pretty damn good, honestly. I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with it. But yeah, it's just that simple. If you wanted to do something similar, this is the, these are the kind of steps you'd want to take. Now, on to the effects. Test, test, test. Hi guys, sorry to interrupt my riveting design of Hi guys, sorry to interrupt the riveting explanation on design me. <coughs> hey guys, sorry to interrupt the riveting explanation on shape systems, but I just discovered a interesting design issue with this. So here I am with my version one of our shape system, and I thought it'd be a good idea to automatically change the direction of the ability based on the angle it has to the character, to the active character. Now, I thought this was a good idea, and you know, in a sense, it looks kind of cool as I go around like this. But you start to see some issues when you when you when you do this. Now, traditionally in most games, do you would rotate it an ability with a button click. You know, you would press R or something, and it would just rotate around. And there's a reason for that, and that is with this shape in particular. I discovered that if I want to attack my little mage guy here, I actually can't because he is on the directional line to our main character and there's just no way with this shape to attack him and that's just not something that that's just not good design you know we're limited now by the types of shapes we can have because of this of this thing so this isn't going to stay in i don't think um but yeah i just thought it was interesting i thought that was what shown so effect systems now i have actually made a video on the making of the effect systems already showed so hang on where am i where am i but check that out check, check that out uh if you want if you're interested on the making of it but i'll run through it again anyway just in case you haven't seen that video um, so effects are already in the game basically through these lava tiles is using the same system as the abilities use so for example when i end turn i took a dude right here that's standing on a lava piece uh, he just took 50% of his health because that's the effect that I've set. And what the effects are, are little here are scriptable objects that have some variables that you can just set. So for example, the lava effect, which we just saw as the stat that is effects. So in, our situ in that situation was health. It minuses by percentage. It Duration is one. So that's kind of how many turns it's going to last for. And then the value is 50. So, so, so that's taking 50% away from our character. Now, what I can do here is uh, not test, <laughs> I haven't tested this light, but it's fingers crossed. So I'm gonna move our character again because it's not stacking at the minute. But so now when it should happen three times to my character before it stops walking. So we're gonna keep looping around now to our archer. He's gonna get hit like that. Let's move him off the lava and he should get hit again when we when it's back to his turn. So he basically is a has a burning effect is what we've just simulated, right? He just got hurt again. And then one more time, Hit again, and there we go again. And he hasn't been hot because the bonnie effect has worn off. Obviously, we don't have I don't have a way of showing that yet, but but it is working. So yeah, so it's just with these scriptable objects. And if I show you what those scriptable objects are, it is a scriptable effect. And yeah, so it's basically what you just saw. We have a stat list, which is an enum of the stats that we currently can affect with our abilities. There's more to be added in here, but I'm not too worried about it at the minute. And then the operation that can be performed. So just some generic mathematic stuff that we can do. So to use these effects, whenever I cast an ability or to stand on an effect tile, every time that happens, we call this apply effect method within our character data class. And all this does, it applies something called a stat modifier to our uh, stats directory. So every character has this stats directory, which is a dictionary with string and a stat. So, and a stat is basically what you'd expect. So it has its name, it has its base value, its count value, and then a list of stat modifiers. Now, stat modifier is I know it's just a generic object that is almost identically identical to the scriptable object. And so, for example, when with the lava effect, when our character started our turn, what we did was we searched through, well, me, I searched through all of the character's stats. I apply a stat dot stat mod, and basically we check if the stat has been modified. So if it has a modifier attached to it, we then go through and we do a bunch of stuff. So if so if the stat is health and it's one of the negative ones, we'll do, we'll do a damage effect to display that on screen. Inversely, if it's a health effect, if it's a good 
effect to that health. We do a heal effect to make it look nice as well. And then we actually apply the stat or the, the modifier to the to the stat. So these are just effects. These aren't actually doing anything yet. And then when we once we it's time to apply the stat, it's just it's just a big switch. So so within our stat our stat <laughs> I'm clipping up my own words. I hope you I hope you're following. So within our stat, I take the value and I just apply the operation to that stat. Okay. <laughs> With the value of the modifier. I hope I hope that makes sense. So we, we so so in our lava situation, um, we're using minus by percentage, and then we know the value is 50. So it's just maths where we just take the stat value and we divide it by it's this is gonna divide it by 50%. Um it's gonna cut it in half and set it. Okay. And then we reduce the duration. If the duration is zero, we remove the stat mod. And now and now it's and if there is no stat mods, then it's not modified anymore. And then that and that stat doesn't get uh, checked every turn anymore. Okay. And our abilities completely piggyback off of that. So here in our ability controller, I, I attach the effect to the character, character stat. And then if its duration is zero, so basically that means that if I want to apply the effect immediately, like just basic fire damage or basic damage, uh, we, we, we apply that stat mod straight away and it does the operation that we want it to do. And that's that. And I think a nice way to wrap up this video is maybe flex a little bit. And why don't I create a new ability from scratch right now in front of and just to show kind of what this type of system can do and how powerful it is. So in our effects, we're going to create a new effect. Let's think about it. Let's do the uh, scriptable effect. We're going to call this just like big boy damage. Okay. And then with our big boy damage, what we'll do is we'll do health. We'll do minus. We'll do value of uh, 500 health, I guess. So we have flat value of 500. So then we have our big boy damage. In our variables, then I'm going to create a new ability. So create the object ability. We're going to call this uh, just big boy. Big boy. <laughs> going to give it its name as well. So this name is used in the button generator. So when I click abilities, we generate the buttons from the script list of scriptable objects the character has. So uh, the description doesn't actually matter at the minute. Our shape, I have gone ahead and drawn a new shape to to add in so I've named new ability so this is a new shape that we're gonna that we're gonna add in um there was a big boy shape new ability so we're gonna add in the shape to it now we add in some effects so we can add in obviously the big boy damage we add in when I when the pop-ups happen the screen changes by the way so, so sorry about that I'll do it from here actually let's make it better and let's give it something else let's give it the lab effect that we were talking about earlier so what's gonna happen is he's gonna get instant damage of 500 and then every turn after that for about three turns, it's going to guess uh, for about three turns, um, it's going to take 50% health. Sorry, I got interrupted for a second. Uh, so, and we'll do a range of three cost of 60. It's going to take a lot of mana and we won't give it a kill then. And we want to include the origin. Include origin means that am I in whether or not to include the mouse position as part of the ability. So sometimes the ability will be cast from a character's location. So in that situation, we don't want to use the origin because the character our character is is the origin for like melee abilities and stuff like that right so there's our ability created and now all we need to do now is attach that to a character so i think james is our blue boy so we're gonna give him a new one excuse me for a second so now he has big boy attached we're gonna press play that should be everything we need to do i'm gonna press play um james is blue mage and there it is big boy ability and there is the new effect we're gonna hit two lads with it boom they just took 400 damage and when it gets to their turn, they should lose half their HP. Or well, in the end. Boom, and he's lost half his HP. It just walks. It just walks. It just walks. We'll go around again. Half HP again. Half HP again. One more time. HP. Half HP. And now it should be all Gucci. He's fine. Just for good measure. Let's just... Oh, I forgot. James only has 66 mana. <laughs> so we can't actually cast the ability anymore. So I need to add in some kind of feedback to say that we can't cast the ability anymore. Which I have forgotten about completely. But now I know about it. So there you go. Live bug on camera. Uh, but that's it. It. that's that's the ability system completely covered and i hope you enjoyed it people have been asking for like more information and more detailed walkthroughs and how i do things and maybe show a little bit more code so i tried to do that here i tried to be a bit more detailed obviously these aren't tutorials so i don't want to go to step by step through every line of code because it's not very interesting to look at and it's just stuff that i'm figuring out so we don't i don't want to be showing you ugly code just to for someone to copy it and not do it correctly and not lay on anything at the same time as well so hopefully this helps hopefully this is helpful and if anybody is trying to do lay on from this and get stuck just comment below i have no problem answering any questions and helping any way i can so just do that and yeah 
Next up is decision trees, I think. We want to try and get some AI into the game. So that's next. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed us and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Oh, it's December. Happy, happy Christmas. <laughs> happy Christmas and Happy New Year. Peace, guys.